Welcome. In this video, we're going to talk about mixing PHP and JavaScript. We're going to go a little bit code heavy in this, but the hopeful outcome will be that anytime you need to mix the two, you'll be able to do so with relative ease. Now, obviously, there's many different reasons why you might want to mix the two, and hopefully you're coming to this video with the understanding that you have some specific use case for it. Uh, but even just as a general technique, I think it's it's interesting to see how the two uh, uh, languages intermingle. Now, there are caveats because this is programming for everything. So what you're about to see here, there are different ways of doing this, possibly better ways, possibly worse ways. Um, and I'm gonna cover one of those in, uh, in due course here. But it is important to mention that this is just one example of a way that we can mix the two languages. And believe me, there are others. Um, but this is going to, if nothing else, give you the core understanding of perhaps the most simplistic way of doing something, but still affords you a lot of power. So. In order to understand the two, it is important to understand the life cycle. And this is luckily really simple to understand. So when I have a page, as I do right here, that is a file that's gonna run on the server, a PHP scripting dynamic page, what happens is the server receives the request, uh, usually Apache or Internet Information Services, so can receive the request for the page, it uh, processes the page in uh, uh, the web server and it passes it off to a, a hook essentially of your dynamic language, in this case PHP, to render any areas that are uh, requested to be rendered by PHP. And in the PHP programming language, we use the open and close PHP block to do that. So I uh, am the web server, I'm processing a page, and as I'm parsing the page, I see that I have this PHP open block. I then pass it off to the PHP interpreter. The PHP interpreter then does whatever it's going to do to the page up to and including writing new code to that page. And then as soon as the end block is hit, it gives it back to the server and uh, we proceed on to the end of the, uh, the code. And if the code is done, then it sends it off to the client. So what this means then, that, that life cycle means that I can modify what is going to run as the HTML slash JavaScript slash CSS of the returned web page. And so if I can in PHP write some JavaScript to my page, well, that's going to get returned to the user and it's going to get uh, uh, processed by your web browser. As long as you have JavaScript enabled, of course, uh, it's going to get processed by your 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 uh, browser as if it was the code that was written in there uh, when the page was first created. And so we can use that to great effect then. And here's an example then of where I'm basically going to take, and we're going to go into this code in just a second, but I'm basically going to dip into PHP as this page is being rendered. I'm going to echo out a script tag. I'm going to grab any uh, query string items, in this case, any items called name, and then I'm going to echo those values out. So if I run this page, um, it's blank at first, but if I add a query string to this page, again, in this case, name, um, it's going to pick that up and it's going to display that to me. And this is JavaScript then, which is supplying the value mat. So before we go into a few other use cases, let's just dive into exactly how this code worked. So again, if I run this page, I am seeing the word mat printed off onto my screen. So if we look at the code right here, essentially what's happening is this. I could, if I want to, just write a script by hand. For example, like this. I could just write this out. I can open and open and closing uh, uh, script tags, and I can do things like I can assign variable called t equal to some value, and then I can alert the value t out to my user. And if I run this page, that's exactly what's going to happen. I'm going to get my first dialog box, and then I'm going to get my second one with the value of 10. So in other words, when I create dynamic code like this, essentially what I'm telling PHP to do is to basically echo out some value uh, based on some logic that PHP has uh, created. And this is why I meant before that there are multiple ways of doing this. So in this particular case, all I'm actually doing is using a built-in PHP function called filter input to grab any git values with the, uh, the key of name, uh, filter it for any special characters, and then create a local variable called t, exact same as I've done right here, and then alert that value out, right? So I'm just kind of using some string, string concatenation here to build a dynamic bit of JavaScript. And so this 
uh, this manner of doing this, that is kind of uh, just building a string up uh, a piecemeal right here, is essentially saying that I need to use PHP to parse my Git variables. But there are obviously ways of doing the exact same thing in JavaScript. Right, so JavaScript has a way of looking at the query string of a, a, a page and and displaying its variables as well. And so, there's absolutely no reason why we couldn't do that. But again, this is PHP centric. But that's a good example of how well we didn't need to dive into PHP to do this. We could have certainly just done this all in JavaScript. The trick is, and as we're going to see in our second example here, uh, we'll get to in just a second, is that maybe we actually wanted to do a database query when the page loads. And because we're actually doing a database query, which doesn't return its results in a query string or something that we could otherwise pick up from JavaScript, we do want to mix and match the two. And we'll take a look at that in just a second. But before I get to that, let's take a look at possibly making this a little bit easier to work with. So essentially what I'm doing right here is I'm building up the entire script by using echo statements in PHP. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with this, but it's a little bit unwieldy to deal with. All I really want to do is basically just say, look, if there is a uh, a variable called name, I want to supply that as a PHP variable, and then I want to echo that, P that PHP variable out in uh, my script. So I don't actually need to write all this nonsense right here to actually get that done. All I really need to do is just do something like this. Just go into PHP to grab the variable out, and then if I really wanted to, get rid of this line and just simply say, back in PHP again, echo out the variable G, right? So I could do this just as easily. I can wrap this in string if I want to here. And this is gonna do essentially the exact same thing. I dive into PHP, I grab the variable using, again, the exact same input. Notice we didn't change this at all. And then I have a script that is going to alert out that value. And so it should be an empty string when I first load the page. And again, if I supply name equals Matt, it should equal Matt right here. So that mess of code that I had before can very easily be turned into something that's a little bit easier to understand. And I think the reason why it's easier to understand here, honestly, is just because we're keeping the two languages a little bit more separate now, right? It's still intermingling here, but of course, that's the point of what we're doing. But really, we're, instead of echoing out the script tag and doing a bunch of other stuff like that, we're, we're making it a little bit simpler in terms of here's a PHP block, here's a JavaScript block. Now, just for the sake of completeness, there is one other way that I could potentially do this, which would be something like this. Clear that out, and I'm gonna say echo, actually here, let me do it this way. I'm gonna say dollar sign HTML equals, and I'm gonna go into a here doc block, and in PHP, this just means instead of having to piece a string together, I'm just gonna kind of build it up using a here doc block. So essentially, this value right here is going to get parsed uh, by this uh, block right here. And now we've kind of kept it, I don't want to necessarily say the best of both worlds because it still is, we're doing a lot of echoing of, of kind of unnecessary JavaScript in, in PHP, but now it's all in PHP, right? There is no more separate JavaScript block, it's just all PHP now. So essentially we're saying that HTML is gonna equal this string. This string, because I'm using a embedded variable right here, is gonna get parsed by the engine. And then I could do something like echo dollar sign HTML. And this is, same as our first two examples, gonna have the exact same effect. It's gonna print out nothing at first. And again, if I supply a query string, it's gonna print that out. So three different ways of doing that. And I think the first one, probably a little bit much. Usually want to avoid that because again, we have two different uh, entire blocks, one of PHP and one of JavaScript. The second one is nice because it creates a nice separation of concerns, but it still has mixing. But again, fine, because there has to be some mixing at some point. But then this third one may be a little bit easier uh, and perhaps is preferable just because arguably we're only going into one language here as far as a programmer goes, right? We're just, we're just doing one thing. Okay, so let's take a look. So this is one example here. This is a query string right here. Let's take a look. Actually, I should say, by the way, we could do something like this then too. Right now it's annoying how we print out this empty uh, dialog box right here. We could do something like this. We could say if dollar sign $g is not equal to a blank string, then go ahead and run this block right here. So 
this is still not super realistic because why are we just echoing out a string? But this is at least a little bit more realistic in terms of we should only be doing something if we have a value. And now this is arguably a little bit easier because now we're using a decision in here, right? We're using a, a block of code to make a decision based on some value. And we're actually telling it uh, to do so in PHP and echoing out the result in PHP as well. So we could have done the same thing, like for example, in JavaScript, um, but this now means that we're creating decisions and we're doing it all in one language. And really the idea here is that a simple example, just echoing out a variable isn't realistic. Who's just gonna do that? Um, but as soon as we get into more realistic examples, we are gonna have things like if statements, decisions being made, as we're about to see, we're gonna have some database code being called. And then it's a little bit more realistic to say, well, maybe we'll just keep it all in one language because therefore um, I have one concern, which is just PHP as opposed to PHP and JavaScript. Um, but again, obviously you could do this any way you want. So anyway, let's take a look for our last example here at something a little bit more interesting, which is gonna be a database call. Now, if you're following along uh, by hand, this can be something that's a little bit more complex to write. Um, I'm using a query module here in Rackforms, which kind of uh, mixes uh, uh, or automates a lot of the, the code that you have to write. But essentially what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna write a database query to select a value from my database. Uh, in this particular case, uh, the name field. So I'm gonna go into a table called FB Demo. I'm gonna select the name field and I want the uh, ID to be 384. So I'm gonna say ID equals 384. And essentially this is going to uh, query my database and it is going to return a result here of that, oops, that value. I did not write that right. Oops, I clearly did not write that query right. There you go. Okay, so I'm returning this value right here. And if we follow along right here, the value that I'm returning is actually going to be in this variable structure. Clean up some of these windows here. Uh, it's gonna be in this variable structure. Oops, let me move this aside here. I tend to have the, the, the tendency to, to add more windows that I want. I want to keep things nice and clean here. But um, essentially what we're doing here is I'm returning a variable called Q1. Q1 then has a zero with indexed array where it has two uh, indices, name and this numeric value zero. And so what I want to do is I actually want to have a couple form fields on my page here. So let's add three text fields. And we're going to call these guys very simply A, B, and C, and then what I want to do is I want to have a code block that, and you can do this any way you want, but I'm going to have a code block that says, if I have one of the two values, or if I have a value for the matching box, I'm going to hide that value. So if I have A, I'm going to hide A. If I have B, I'm going to hide B, and if I had C, I'm going to hide C. Now right now, we have a pipe delimited list of A and C. So when I run my code, I want to use JavaScript to say for every letter that's uh, available to us in this list, hide that field. So how would something like that look? Again, we're gonna mix PHP and JavaScript to do that. So it would probably look a little something like this. So what I'm basically gonna do here is I'm gonna open up a PHP block. And the first thing I do is I'm gonna assign a local to my uh, string right here. So I'm gonna say dollar sign Q1, the zero with index, and then the name field. Let me explain this for a second here. So when we return something, and at least in how Rackforms returns things, um, we have the name of our variable, which is the result set from the database query, in this case, Q1. We then have the index of where this result rests. Because there was only one row returned, it's the zero with index. So I'm gonna say zero, but you can see how we're following along. We're saying Q1, zero. And then finally, we have the field that we wanna get. So for every database column, we have a numeric index and then we have a field name, which is AKA the column name. So in other words, the column in my FB demo table was called name. So therefore I want the name field. And so therefore I'm gonna say name. Now Rackforms does return this as a numeric index as well. So I could just as easily say zero in here, right? That'd be fine. But I like to keep things a little bit more verbose and say I'm going for the name field. 
Okay, so now we have a local variable. Now what I wanna do is I wanna create an array of values that's going to be the exploded version of local. And just before we get too ahead of ourselves, let's do a print r then on array. Just so you can see exactly what the output is here. So the output is an array where the first index is the letter A and the second index is the letter C. So I have gone from basically this right here to an array that just contains single letters, which is good because this is exactly what I want. I got a field called A, in this case C, and I want to hide those guys now. So now what I'll do is I will say for each, I want to loop over this array. So I'm going to say for each array as, let's just say R, so I'm going to take each one of those letters, I'm going to put into a separate variable called R. And then what I want to do is I want to write some JavaScript now that essentially is going to uh, hide each one of those fields. So maybe what I could do, and this is why we did the first example, way at, at, the, way been, way at the beginning of this video, um, we did that thing where we actually echoed out a like kind of like a raw JavaScript opening tag. Well, this is why we did that is because in this particular case, it's actually perhaps a little bit cleaner for me just to do something like this. Echo out a script open tag, perform my loop, and then echo out the script closing tag. So we are now, anything that happens in between here, if I echo anything out, it's gonna be within a JavaScript tag, right? So I can effectively do something. And the thing I'm effectively gonna do is I'm gonna say echo, and I'm going to say fbc.hide. Now, fbc.hide is a, um, as a matter of fact, let me just do it this way. fbc.hide is a built-in reference function that we can use to hide fields, and all it requires is the name of a field. Now, again, this array, as we loop through it, is gonna supply me with two values, the letter A and the letter C. And that just, again, happens to be exactly what I have here. So I'm going to echo out that value. I probably want to wrap it in a string because these are strings. And so going through this then, I assign the local variable. This We didn't need to do this. I'm just being a little bit explicit here. I'm saying local equals whatever that array was, so A and C. Um, I then explode that array based on its pipe. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I have formatted the data in the database to use a pipe value. So if I want to add a new value, I just simply say pipes, like in this case, B. And we'll do that in just a second, but just kind of show you that we're using the pipe to separate it. So when I run the explode command, I'm saying uh, take each one of those elements and put it in its own uh, array. We then, just for the sake of fun, we print R that array so we actually see what its result was. And again, we saw that that uh, created the, um, uh, the A and the C for us. Uh, so this is kind of like our core logic. Then we're going to echo out an opening script tag, right? So anything that happens in between here is effectively JavaScript as far as the, the web page is concerned. We close the script, and then in between, we issue PHP to say for each one of these array items, assign it a local variable of R. So the words A and C are going to be equal to whatever R is. And then I'm going to echo out fpc.hide. So again, this essentially is a built-in function of rack forms to hide a field, and the value I'm going to give it is the value right here, which again is going to be A and C. So if I've done everything right, um, hopefully what should happen here is I'm going to run this form and A and C should be hidden. Now, unfortunately, it's not. Um, so what went wrong? Well, one of the nice things about mixing PHP and JavaScript like this is I can actually view the source code of the page. And it may take a little bit of doing to find out exactly where that was, but here we are. We can see that we are uh, breaking into JavaScript right here. And then we're issuing fbc.hide and fbc.hide again. And so I can already see what the error is here, but this illustrates, as much as I like things to go right the first time, this actually is a good illustration of why it can be tricky to mix and match PHP and JavaScript like this. Essentially what's happened is this is not valid JavaScript because there is no semicolon at the end of this line. So I just wanna make sure that for every call to fbc.hide, I issue a semicolon. And so now if I run this, those two fields are going to be hidden. So it's kind of a good description here. Let me view the source code of the page here again so you can actually see that. Um, now you can see that instead of there just being nothing here, there is a semicolon in between those two statements. Now, if we really want to, 
we can get a little bit crazier with this and we can do things like we can echo out line breaks. I will actually do this sometimes uh, just because I'm funny like that. So I can echo out some line breaks and I can echo out some line breaks right here and right here. So that if I actually view the source code of, of this page, it's actually gonna be nicely formatted. I can even add a line break right here and just for the heck of it, a tab line right there. Like you can get as crazy as you want. And because I'm kind of a weird perfectionist like that, sometimes I actually will do that. I will actually add code so that the resulting uh, uh, data here or the, the resulting uh, output is nice and pretty. So oop, I didn't like that extra line, no problem. If I view my source code now, again, we got this nice, it looks like we wrote the script by hand. We can even add comments in here, etc., And everything just works. Now again, you don't necessarily need to do that, but I like to show this as an example of how, I guess, powerful this is, right? Like using these echo statements here, we are just injecting code into the page before it gets to the browser. And because it, we're doing it before it gets to the browser, we're essentially telling it that whatever runs here is gonna run as if you wrote this code by hand. And so a lot of times, particularly with more complex jobs, I will do stuff like this. I will basically write my code so that if I'm running into problems later on, uh, I can go in here and I can very easily uh, find the cause of it just by looking for the script tag that I created. And there are lots of things that I could do to this right here. So right now I'm just kind of echoing out raw JavaScript right here. This could be a huge security concern, right? Like if uh, it is coming from some user generated input, let's say like on a comments form, this could be hugely, hugely dangerous because maybe that user that uh, submitted some data to your, your form, which we're now displaying, inputted their own JavaScript into that. And now you could uh, potentially, for any visitors at your site, be displaying some JavaScript that's pulling content from some other site, like a fake Facebook login, etc. And so, look, you have to be careful with this type of code right here. But in this particular case, because I know that I control the values that I'm showing here, which again is just literally uh, a pipe limited list of these, these values, I know that I was okay in this demo. But if I was doing anything in terms of production work with this, you bet your bottom dollar that I'd be going in, I'd be stripping out extra characters, I'd be filtering the strings, etc. And so I do wanna call your attention to this filter input function right here. Uh, filter input um, is a fantastic function, built-in function in uh, PHP 5 and, uh, looks like 5.2 and higher. Uh, that is basically going to run a filter on a string that you give it. And we saw an example of that right here where I was actually using filter input to grab the input of a, uh, a get string. And of course you always wanna do this. Like if you're, if you're grabbing a, a query string, always, always filter it in some way. Here I'm using special characters, but you could just do it as make sure it's just a string. Maybe if you're doing something where you're passing in an ID um, and you're gonna use that in a database query, you could basically filter by numeric input, so it can only be a number. Uh, so use this. If, you, if, you're, if, you're, uh, if you're mixing and matching PHP, there is a very good chance that you're doing so because you're either accepting input from the user, like we are here, or you're doing something where we're accepting user a potential user input from like a third party source, whether it's a database or whatever. We don't know necessarily how that data got in there. And so we absolutely wanna be sure that we're gonna run filter input. And this would be the exact same thing. Like I could basically go in and I could filter the input at this stage. I could, for each element in my array, I can make sure it's a, a, a single letter. There's lots of things I could do there. But just check out filter input, really, really useful. It doesn't only just work for get strings. We can run this essentially on any variable that we have in PHP to make sure it is the type that we expect, or if nothing else, that doesn't actually have extra values in there. So. This has been a rather long video, but hopefully a useful one where we talked about mixing PHP and JavaScript. If you have any questions about this or anything else that you've seen, please let us know at info at Always happy to help out and thanks for watching.